So the focus of this, of course, webinar today is improving your requirement solicitation techniques. And we're going to step through some of the skills that are needed, why it's so important, and um, some of the methods that can be used during requirement solicitation. I just also wanted to mention that if you have questions as we go throughout this presentation, you can enter questions in the GoToMeeting um, screen on your right-hand side or where you have a, wherever you have it displayed on your screen. And we will try to answer those questions at the end, and that depends somewhat on um, you know, how much time we have. Okay, so first of all, we're going to start by defining what requirement solicitation is. Sounds like that's kind of a trivial thing to do, but what I've found a lot of times when I go out to do training is there's kind of a blur between requirement solicitation and requirements management. So let's define what requirement solicitation is. And here are some definitions that I found. In requirements engineering, the practice of obtaining requirements of a system from users, customers, and other stakeholders. The process of identifying needs and bridging disparities among involved communities for the purpose of defining and distilling requirements to meet the constraints of these communities. Eliciting a specification of what is required by allowing experts in the problem domain to describe the goals to be reached. And the process of discovering requirements for a system by communication with customers, systems users, and others who have a stake in the development. And the reason I put this up and kind of go through it is to point out nowhere in here do we talk about defining system functionality, defining data tables, defining how communication is going to occur between systems. Remember that requirement solicitation is focused on just defining the user's problem, the user's need, not solving it. And that's one of the key things that we want to focus on is that we're not talking about defining the system itself. We're describing what the user needs. And a lot of times, elicitation gets bogged down because we get into solutions much more quickly than we should, and it really bogs down the elicitation process. So some of the things, challenges of requirements elicitation are getting it right, getting it complete, getting agreement, making it understandable, and doing all this in a short amount of time. It's kind of like a, an oxymoron in a way. We have to do all these things, but we have to do it very, very quickly, of course, because there's always this emphasis and push to get past the elicitation, get those requirements defined so we can start development. But as we all know, this upfront work is key to really understanding what it is we're even trying to do. So I believe analysts need to understand a little bit about the business. What is the strategy and direction? Something about the business process and the kind of information that's used. They need to know something about the product. Who's the market? What, who are the users that are going to use this product? What is the value to the users? And, and it, in today's world, there's a lot of questions about career paths for requirements analysts and business analysts as well. And the technology. What is possible? What's already there? The language of development, not the development language. So in other words, I need, as an analyst, to be able to speak to technical people. I don't have to know how to write code, but I need to know how to communicate in a, in a technical language with them. Who should be involved during the elicitation? Um, well, anybody that's impacted by the project. 